Hello, hello, and welcome back to True Tory TV. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about my anxiety story. Um, so I really wanted to lay out this whole story for you, just simply so that for a few reasons, so that you can feel relatable, so that you know that how bad I went through it, and just to feel like you're not alone if you are in a dark place in your anxiety journey. Um, I went through anxiety for most of my life and it's been a really, really long road. And so I wanted to kind of share the different steps of my journey kind of what I learned along the way and how it all culminated in the past year for me to really realize what was happening, get a strong hold on it, and allow myself to start to move through anxiety rather than trying to control it or get around it. So I have some notes if you see me looking down from time to time, um, just so that I stay on track. So let's get into it. I've always been, like, I was always a very, very sensitive kid, and I had so much love, have so much love for my family, for my loved ones, for everyone around me, for just life in general and experiences. Like, I remember never, ever, ever wanting an experience to end, like, a good night or a good holiday or a good day. Like, I just never wanted it to end, and I would get really upset when it would. And so, my anxiety um used to culminate a lot right as I was going to sleep and I know that it's that way for a lot of people and so literally as I was going to sleep all these intrusive thoughts would come in and it would be like and this is like very dark so I'm just gonna kind of give you that disclaimer here um it would just come in and be like what if you die in your sleep? What if you wake up and everything's different? What if everyone dies? What if it was like, it was very final. It was like things that were like endings would really trigger me. Um, and so I realized that I was, I was just really scared. I was living in fear of losing loved ones, which of course is normal. Everybody, everybody fears that and the finality of kind of like our human experience um and that's something that's still to be determined in terms of you know how you deal with that and I'm looking into stuff like that but it's it's scary and especially as a kid I feel like I was very awakened from a young age just an old soul who had been through it before and knew these things like I, like what kid really worries about that I had no one in my life who had passed away yet but I used to fear it so much and so I that's where really where the anxiety started and so then fast forward to kind of like you know I would struggle with that a lot um fast forward to like my teenage years and I was quite rebellious and so I don't need to really hear about this in the comments. So if you have something negative to say about, you know, my my past, I don't really want to hear it. And you'll be, you know, blocked. Um, no negativity in the comments. This is a safe space for people to express themselves and to hear my experience so that they don't feel alone this is not a place for opinions on anything I'm about to say so I was young I was in high school um I smoked cigarettes so I was smoking a lot of cigarettes a lot I had no limits I didn't know boundaries with others or with myself uh, with myself and so I had uh, I had a lot of cigarettes. I had a lot of like Snapple iced teas. And then I had like 20 ounces of coffee in the morning. And I, lo and behold, had my first panic attack. So what do you think that was from? Obviously, that was a physical 
manifestation of panic. Um, I probably wouldn't have had that panic attack. There was nothing I was nervous about. And I probably wouldn't have had that panic attack if I didn't abuse my body in that way. Um, but it was the first time I ever had a panic attack and I was sitting in school and it just kind of came on and I didn't even know what it was. Like, I was like, what's happening? Like, I'm like losing control. I have no control of my body of, you know, my mind. I'm like freaking out. And I remember going to the nurse and she was like, well, it seems like you had an anxiety attack. And that was the first time I ever learned about this. Didn't even learn about it. She was like, oh, you had a panic attack. They didn't say anything else about it. So then um, I continued to have them from time to time, but I would really want, I would, I was still abusing my body with cigarettes, with nicotine, caffeine, you name it, sugar, all that stuff. And so, um, but I would know, I knew that if I went too far, that would happen. So it kind of deterred me from going like too far, even though it did happen a few times after that. But now I knew what a panic attack was, right? But I figured I could control it with my whatever I was intaking. So I get to college and this is when in high school, I never really cared about school, about grades, about any of that. In college, I really reinvented myself. I started to give a shit like I started to care and I was like, I care about my grades. I care about the outcome. I care about um my own reputation not in terms of grades but in terms of like how I was behaving and so in high school I didn't really care about stuff like that and so um this was kind of when I started to just care more and it also kind of leaked into caring about what people thought a little bit and starting to overthink and starting to have like stress induced habitual induced anxiety and so I I was immersed in the stress culture of college, of cramming, of finals, of, you know, not regulating my stress at all, just knowing that it was a stressful time and I should be stressed out and blah, blah, blah. Um, and, you know, that's when society really infiltrates our brains in the matrix, some like to call it, but in just like societal norms like going to school or going to work where it's just like everybody's stressed and when you're coming into it and you don't know any different you just figure oh like this is this is what happened like it's just like infused into you like oh I'm just supposed to be stressed because it's a stressful situation and like I have no control over it so that's just how it's supposed to be and so I really got caught up with the stress of it all and then I was also engaged in a few things in terms of like um, just, I felt I needed to make some decisions that I wasn't making out of fear and out of, honestly, I had a lot of anxiety around making these decisions and I had, I wasn't being true to myself. I wasn't living my truth and I didn't know this then, but I know it now. Um, I wasn't living my truth. And what happened was I got a lot of anxiety and I got really overwhelmed from not listening to my intuition, from not making a decision that I knew I had to make. And so when I finally made the decision, it was extremely overdue and I suffered for a whole year because I didn't listen to the whispers of my intuition telling me, you have to do this now, you have to do this now, you have to do this now until it screamed at me. I had an overwhelming amount of anxiety. I could just like completely lost it. I went to go see a counselor and I remember walking in and I was holding so much in that just walking through the threshold of the door of the counselor slash therapist, I just burst out in tears. And that's what happens when you hold in those emotions. You can't, you can't hold them in. Even if you are experiencing anxiety, experiencing anxiety, and I go over this in my course, even if you're experiencing the anxiety, even if it's really hard and you're going through it, like you have to feel it and go through that shit. Like you have to let it, let it out because if you have 
the feelings and you just keep letting it build and those intense kind of anxiety overwhelming feelings you're gonna blow and so I remember how relieving it was to just cry and to be in a space where I hadn't even spoken to this woman yet but like I knew it was okay for me to cry. That was the first time someone ever held space like that for me. And that's why ultimately why I became a coach. Not because of her, but because it was um, it was really beautiful to be able to know you're in a safe space without any words even being spoken. I just, I felt so held by her. Um... And those kinds of people in our life, I'm actually getting really emotional just thinking about it because this woman really, really saved me at, at a really, um, really hard time. And I know that you are, if you're watching this video, you probably have anxiety and I bet that you're going through a really, really hard time. And I've been there and I, I went through so many years of just not knowing, of just not... <sighs> just not knowing what to do or I just not trusting any thought that went through my head and it was so 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 hard and I feel you and I just want you to know that I see you and I came up with this course this method the free ebook all these things I do about anxiety because it's it's a huge thing in this world in everybody's life everywhere you go you hear people talking about anxiety about they have anxiety and 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 everyone's normalizing it and it's not normal it's not normal we're just making it normal but it is not a normal response it's not a part of you it's literally just an experience and we're making it so big and we're making it so normal to have that you feel like you're just supposed to be stuck with this forever and you're not you are not. So I created all of these things, all of these resources. I talk about this constantly because I want you to know that it's not normal. And I want you to know that you can, you can get through it like I got through it. And I'm not a therapist. I'm not a mental health professional. I'm literally just based off my own experience, but I know how bad it was for me. I know, I know how crippling it was. I know how, how horrible it was. I know how debilitating it felt. I know how scary it felt to not feel like you would ever get out of your own mind. I felt literally claustrophobic in my own mind. And that is one of the worst feelings, I think, in the world. Um, and so I speak from a place of experience. I speak from a place of someone being on the other side of that suffering. Um, I never thought I would get out. I never ever thought I would get out, but I did. And I, I truly believe that I was put here and put through those things to come up with methods and to come up with all these and to have all these deep realizations to share them with you, to share them with you so that you can get through it too so that you can have your own epiphanies so that you can have your own breakthroughs when it comes to anxiety and so that you can take your life back um so I went on a little bit of a tangent there because I feel so strongly about this um and so I'm just gonna keep going with the story but I I felt like that had to come out so I said it um so yeah so then after I saw the counselor, I think I've just processed a lot of emotions. Looking back on it now, I felt really good after I stopped seeing her was when I, um, maybe I, I think I stopped seeing, I think I saw her for like one semester or maybe a whole year and then, um, I stopped seeing her and I, <sighs> I stopped really having anxiety after I made the decisions that were really overwhelming me. I didn't have that like, um, I didn't have that like overarching anxiety in my life. It was more like situational, circumstantial, like I would get it sometimes, but I was really numbing a lot of the anxiety, a lot of the emotions. I was numbing it with drinking a lot, partying a lot, smoking a lot. So I started to shift into caring so much to not giving a shit at all, to not caring at all, to not caring what people thought, to not caring about my body. 
I wanted to be like a badass so bad and I was like and I thought that was not caring um and I just felt lost but my ego was telling me that I wasn't lost that this was who I was and it's funny what your ego will say to you in those moments um and how believable it is but anyway so I Basically, I thought I had my life under control. I thought I had anxiety under control. I was like, oh, I healed from anxiety. It's done. It's great. It would come on every once in a while. And I would be like, oh, okay, like, whatever. Um, I'll just breathe and get through this. This was like when I, I had known about like box breathing, which I talk about in the course. Um, and I'll actually do a video on box breathing too, because it's so simple. And it's such an easy way to um, help with anxiety, situational, circumstantial anxiety. Um, so I would just breathe through it or I would numb it or with alcohol or I would work out or I would do something that would just be like kind of an escape. And so then it would go away. But I thought it would go away, but it was really just suppressing and suppressing and suppressing. Right. So I went to... Um, to work for a really really stressful place and here is where the overwhelm started again to build and the anxiety started to build and I was getting really anxious about every time I was going into work and like I was drinking a lot of coffee and I was not taking care of myself and I was doing all these things and I think that this all manifested also with gut health and so this is why I take the holistic approach to anxiety. This is why I don't think it's just a mindset. It is not just a mindset. It, it like you have to reset your gut to be able to produce the happy hormones that you need to release the anxiety. Like our cells literally hold emotion. And so when you don't release that emotion and when you don't cleanse your body periodically, you can do all the mindset work you want, but your your body is not working with your mind, if that makes sense. So you, this is why the holistic approach to anxiety, like mind, body, soul, and that's what I talk about all the time. And that's, that's literally the structure of the course, the empowered anxiety course is because I didn't, I didn't fully stand in my power when it came to anxiety and know that it wasn't going to break me until I started doing all of those things in conjunction with each other and one will work for a little while but then the other will work against you if you're not kind of nurturing all three and so and and the thing is too when you nurture all of those things it really helps you to in like personal development spiritual development your body is healthy like it, it helps it pays dividends like I said it helps with so many things um and it's not just it's it's not just for anxiety but it does it can be centered around anxiety and really really help um in that way so of course then um you know 10 years later um, after like kind of dealing with it, suppressing with it, suppressing it, running away from it, whatever. My gut health not being good kind of manifested at the same time as COVID and the beginning of COVID in 2020. And so I remember being locked down and I wasn't super social at that time. So I wasn't really freaking out about not being able to go out, but I was very plugged into all of the fear of the beginning of the pandemic which was horrifying I think we can all agree with that so I remember a specific moment I was sitting in my bed I was laying in my bed I was going to sleep trying to and I remember sitting there laying there <laughs> and thinking what if this pandemic never ends what if COVID never ends what if this fear never ends. What if this anxiety never ends? What if I can't ever get out of my own mind? So it was kind of like these layers of fear that I was just like working through. 
And you know when your mind starts to spiral like that, especially at night when it's quiet and those intrusive thoughts can really, really insert themselves into your, your mind and your subconscious. And I was just, oh my God, I was so overwhelmed with those thoughts. And I remember thinking I felt so claustrophobic in my mind and it was because I felt claustrophobic in the external world because I was like oh my god what if I can never like freely you know leave my house or go to go to like these things or whatever and then it would it, it kind of seeped into like what if I can never free be free in my own mind what if this anxiety never goes away and that was when that was what led to the epiphany aha moment a few nights later because I remember processing that emotion without knowing what processing emotions are. It was so overwhelming that I was crying and I was like feeling that grief of like, oh my God, what if this never ends? And so they say that when you feel grief, it actually only takes about 20 minutes to process if you truly like feel it. And so I did that night and I felt, I felt it hard and it hit me really, really hard. And over the next few days, I had this breakthrough moment that I, I realized, I realized that anxiety is not me. Anxiety is not in my mind. It's passing through. And so I'll never... I'll, my mind is separate from anxiety. It's a separate entity. And so that gave me so much peace knowing like, okay, when it passes through, if I just figure out how to not only, not only do anything and everything I can to stop it from passing through, but then on the days when like it just does, because it just does, I'll know how to handle it. And, and knowing that it wasn't a part of me and getting that intuitive higher knowing feeling that it wasn't a part of me was so powerful and it completely turned things around it uh, like that moment and I have chills right now because that moment is what turned it all around for me and that's why I speak I I drive home that anxiety is not you that it's a, not a part of your identity that we need to stop saying my anxiety because it's not yours and so I'll do a whole video on that but and it's in my free ebook as well which the link is in the description if um if you want to read more about that so it's it's it was the epiphany moment it was absolutely wild and so over the next year I really started to work through my anxiety I started to have all these epiphanies I started to go through a deeper like more intense version of anxiety that I had ever experienced before and so after I had these epiphanies again my ego got in the way and I thought wow I'm so smart. I'm over anxiety. I have the key. Like I, I got the code. I'm good to go. Right. And then it came on even more intense, even stronger. And I was like, I remember again, laying in bed one night at, at bedtime, everyone else was sleeping. And I remember feeling so victimized and just so upset thinking why is this happening to me why is it so strong why can't I just get rid of this and then again one of those other one of those little thoughts got inserted into my head one of those epiphany aha moments where it was like you have to go through this intense severe anxiety so that you can come up with a way to help others and that's ultimately when the empowered anxiety course was born um I had no idea I would make a course I had no idea I would really organize all my thoughts and my methodology but I knew that I knew that 
that's why. I knew that that was why. And that gave me so much peace because I'm a nurturer. I'm a healer. I'm a light worker. I'm a someone who has always loved to help others. And I knew that I would help others one day. I didn't know how I would, but I knew I would. And that gave me so much peace to go through the rest of that bout of my anxiety journey knowing that it was all for the good of the universe the good of the collective it was all for a bigger reason to be able to help others not feel this to make to be able to shorten the suffering time and so being making this video and being on the other side of the empowered anxiety course being created and and ready and out and live and ready for you to get so that you can change your own life made it, it's just such a, a full circle moment and so I'm so grateful that you came on this journey with me through this video of my journey um and how I got here how you know, my my own experience that led me to create this product, this course, this journey for you. And so the Empowered Anxiety course ultimately opens up the doors. It gives you the structure to be held. It's fully self-study, self-paced, and it gives you the structure to be held by the container of this self-study course. Um, this work is not something that can just be done in a night. And so it could take anywhere from one to two months, I would say. It could take longer, but at least one to two months to complete. Because I want you to really take the time to do the work, do the action steps, do all the things that, you know, the journal prompts, the meditations. It has affirmations, meditations, EFT tapping, customized to the anxiety journey the empowered anxiety warrior and it it's ultimately self-study because I know that everybody's journey is different I know that everybody's journey takes a different amount of time and I encourage you to go back to the empowered anxiety course even after you've completed it because our journeys always go deeper our journeys always continue our healing journey from anxiety or anything else healing is not linear it is it's like a squiggle like it's like it's like if you just scribbled on a page that's healing like it's it's not linear and you can always go deeper and that's the beauty of it and that's the beauty of this life and so um i'm leaving the link down below for the empowered anxiety journey i also have the link down below for um, the five most important things you will ever learn about anxiety. That is my free ebook. And so you could always go the free route first and get the empowered anxiety course later. You can get both at the same time. You can, you can not get anything, but whatever action you take after watching this video, I encourage you to sit for a moment and close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths in and out. And think of something that's causing you a lot of suffering, a lot of pain. And once you have it, I want you to think of who you will be on the other side of that pain and suffering. Make it all worth it. Make, you know, be a student to your life. Let yourself learn from the pain and the suffering because they're all challenges and they're here to teach us. And they're here for you. And I know they seem like they're happening to you, but they are happening for you. And once you can realize that you are a student of your life, that's when these things become life-changing moments for you and for other people too. And so think of how empowered and 
how much of a different person you'll be on the other side of that suffering and pain and also what you have to do in the midst of the suffering and pain to come out empowered on the other side because there's a very very fine line bet between coming out empowered and coming out feeling defeated and so I want you to feel empowered. That's why I created this course. That's why I make all my content, um, Instagram, YouTube, podcasts, TikTok. <laughs> this is why I'm across all of these platforms because I want to get to as many people as possible because this is what it's all about. I, I have to reach as many people as possible with this message so that you can you can heal yourself and so that you can create the life that you want and so that nothing is standing in the way of that especially not yourself and so with that um i'm going to get going if you have any questions about any part of my journey if you just want to unload in the comments if you want to dm me um if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching all of that information for one-on-one -on -one coaching empowered anxiety course and the free ebook that's all down below in the description you can always drop in the comments if this video had an impact on you if you currently struggle with anxiety and if it helped you in any way um i'd love to hear your feedback on that and i'd love to hold a safe space for you to um to work through the anxiety or whatever pain and suffering you're going through at this time and reach out to me dm me on instagram at true tori at any time um in your journey and i can't wait to see you in the course around in any of my social media communities and so if you like my message my content please hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell for notifications every time I upload a video and I'll see you on the next one.